How? How could you decide to up res the angelic sanguinary guard and not include their most iconic and most thematically significant design motif? These Primaris sanguinary guard just look so off. There is so much to criticize here, it could probably be a video on its own. For these sculpts to serve as the Blood Angels elite of the elite, for Dante, the commander of Imperium Nihilus's honor guard, is disappointing. So disappointing, I felt like making a thematic list build for a proper group of noble elites. A collection of chapter veterans, the very best of the best. This one is for the veterans of the Dark Angels. It's a thematic list build for the Deathwing. Let's start by taking a look at the rules. The Space Marines Army rule is Oaths of Moment, a target declaration in your command phase for your entire army to reroll hits against a single enemy unit, which lasts until your next command phase, a rule which makes it easier for Space Marines to take down critical targets. It's simple, but effective. This time around I'm looking to utilize the Inner Circle Task Force Detachment, its Vowed Target Detachment rule similarly asks you to make a Battle Round Lasting Declaration, but in your movement phase. And instead of selecting an enemy unit, you're selecting objective markers through one of two modes. Defensive Footing lets you select one objective you control to become the Vowed Objective Marker. And Aggressive Push lets you select as many objectives as you want which aren't under your control to become Vowed. It's all to serve the primary perk, which allows Deathwing Infantry units making attacks against enemies in range of Vowed Objective Markers to add one to their wound rolls. There's also a bit of back-end tools which provide additional bonuses based on Vowed Objectives as well. So between the Army Rule and the Detachment Rule, you can make your oaths and make your vows, allowing you to leverage efficiency boosters for hitting army-wide and wounding for Deathwing Infantry which should cover all of your noble transhuman declaratory needs. I do declare. Now, let's head over to the list breakdown. I'll start with the core of this Deathwing list, which of course will be a few units of Deathwing Terminator squads. First up, we have a fat unit of 10 Deathwing Terminators. The two Termies with heavy weapons are fitted with Cyclone Missile Launchers to provide some anti-armor support. This is then followed up by two more units of Deathwing Terminators, each five strong. The Terminator with heavy weapons in each of these squads has been fitted with Plasma, cause Dark Angels, and because I particularly like the Dark Angels Underhand Terminator Plasma Cannon. Lovely. Serving as the leader for one of those units will be a Librarian in Terminator Armor. The Librarian brings a bit of psychic defense to his unit. The Librarian's bigger get is his Veil of Time ability, which gives his unit sustained hits 1. And I've decided to give the Librarian the enhancement Deathwing Assault, which allows his unit to arrive from Deep Strike turn 1. So if there is an enemy unit you want to maximally target, have this Librarian lead the 10-man unit and set up your oaths and vows accordingly. But... alternatively, you could stick him with a five-man squad, and remind your opponent you have a stratagem which allows you to deep strike within three inches, the knowledge of which is sure to keep their backline honest. Next we got two units of Deathwing Knights, each are five men strong, and these glorious veterans of the chapter are each fully equipped uniformly. So one squad's got maces and the flail, with the other taking all power swords. This is mostly for style purposes, but the balanced data slate improving those profiles to a more reasonable standard doesn't hurt one bit. Deathwing Knights are the premier elites and stars of this list. They look imposing, are appropriately regal, and are chonky even by Terminator standards. With each model possessing four wounds while benefiting from their inner circle ability, reducing all damage suffered by one. Next we have a Captain in Terminator armor. Now this Captain isn't going to be our Warlord which results in his inclusion being a bit soured in my opinion. But because the Terminator Chaplain's ability overlaps with the Vowed Objective's perk, and because enhancements are essentially what we must use to balance out our points, with the way things are presently, 
the captain's a better fit. Maybe we can use our imagination and pretend he's a very skilled strike master or champion. That aside, like all captains, this guy brings flexibility with his CP reducing rights of battle ability. And this Terminator captain can allow his unit to reroll charge rolls as well, which is a great fit for our Terminator theme. When combined, it makes his unit great for stratagems like Wrath of the Lion, or situations where you may want to double dip strats like Unmatched Fortitude or Armor of Contempt. Next up is the Big Cheese himself, the Grand Master of the Deathwing and Warlord of this list, Belial. Belial is a man of precision. His bolter has precision. His sword has precision. Even his ability gives his unit precision, though they do need to score critical hits. His other ability provides him a means to deal mortal wounds to enemy units, which make attacks against him in melee. And the last infantry unit of this list is an Ancient and Terminator armor. Personally, I'd attach him to whichever unit Belial is in for that peak Man of Culture Command Squad energy. While his banner ability to increase his unit's OC is nice, his Lose More efficiency boosting ability is less so. With that in mind, to allow our Ancient to provide a bit more value, he's been given the enhancement Singular Will, which will let his unit increase their pylon and consolidation moves by 3 inches. And since in 10th edition, you don't have to fight what you charge, Belial piling in 6 inches could have some spicy utility. And rounding out the last two spots on this list are two Redemptor Dreadnoughts. Why? Well, because I want at least a few units of high toughness which can soak a bit of damage. Which Redemptors certainly can. 12 wounds behind a toughness of 10, with a 2-up armor save. And their ability reduces damage suffered by 1, much like Deathwing Knights which is neat. They're equipped with the Macroplasma Cannons because the list can benefit from a bit of ranged anti-armor support. However, before we close out this list, we got a bit of hobby time. For those who are not Legends-phobic, you can consider swapping out the two Redemptors for two Leviathan Dreadnoughts. I think these would look stellar painted in the Deathwing scheme, bonus if using the Dark Angel's Leviathan chassis which also happens to better evoke the whole Tech from the Dark Age motif the Dark Angels ought to flex. Functionally, the Leviathan Dreadnoughts fit the Redemptor's role fairly well. The stat line is the same, but the Leviathan benefits from an invulnerable save. And the Leviathan also shares the Damage Minus One ability. As far as melee weapons go, I've opted to give one of the arms a Siege Claw, to give it the same melee output as the Redemptor. And for the guns, the Leviathan trades range for spice, albeit swingy spice. The Grav Flux Bombard is probably the most thematic for flexing Dark Age tech, but I find Grav weapons are poorly ruled this edition. Even my thematic allowance has a limit. And so I've gone with the Melta Lance, heavy flamers on the chest, and a Melta Gun in the claw. The Leviathan also has three Hunter Killer missiles, which is a nice feather in its cap. And wouldn't you know, it rounds out the list perfectly to an even 2,000 points. And we're done. 2,000 points on the nose. Or 1990 for those with a less refined palate. Now obviously, this list is very elite. It doesn't afford shoehorned action monkeys to do side quests or include numerous fodder scouts or infiltrators to screen out the board before the game begins. All of which are things I find annoying about competitive play anyhow. Clearly, it's not a list made for min-maxing matched play. This is a pure Deathwing Strike Force. That's a wrap on this Deathwing Strike Force thematic list build. If you enjoyed this video, there are buttons for liking, sharing, and subscribing. And special thanks to Julius Maximus, as well as my other generous patrons and channel members. I'm setting things up so channel members and patrons get early access to videos just a little something for those who help keep the dream alive. I've also been doing hobby live streams on the channel, so if chill hobby jams are your thing, join in and let's get those projects done. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.